Hello and welcome to the But You're a Woman podcast, where we speak to women of all roles that have a part to play in the music industry. Our mission is to uncover the realities of being a woman in this industry and to be a resource to the many that would like to pursue a music related career. My team and I are all women that actively work in the music industry and around music. I am Khalees KB, a presenter, DJ and host. Um, and this podcast is something I am very, very truly excited about. In each episode, I will be joined by a co-host best suited for the topic of discussion, which means I am joined by the wonderful, beautiful, fantastical. Hi guys, I'm Claudia uh, <laughs> and I'm a freelance presenter and content creator, if you want to put it that way. I also work in the music industry, so yeah. There you go, Link Up, Miss Link Up. Um, I'm very happy to have you on. Thank I'm you I'm excited being to here. be here. I love talking to women and learning more about them, so let's do it. Beautiful. Um, so this episode is called White Collar Women, uh, which we've had in the pipeline for you know a month now because we feel like it's something that isn't spoken about enough. Um, the women that sit behind desks, the women that sit in, on work calls and send emails and really put in the work behind the scenes, um, which means I am joined by two beautiful guests, Cleo and T. Cleo, would you like to tell them about yourselves? Hi, my name is Cleo Celeste. I am a digital marketer and social media manager for music artists, my clients who are artists. I liaise with their management team and their marketing team from their record labels on how to deliver growth and grow their digital presence so that they're successful among social media. Wonderful. Beautiful, fantastic. And T. Hello, I'm Tehila T. Um, I'm a freelance creative in the music and creative industries. And you name it, I have probably done it. Amazing, I love that. My <laughs> biggest issue with the music industry, and this is coming from, this is coming from somebody who's, no, that's me. Sorry, I went off my watch. Oh, <laughs> um, my biggest issue in the music industry, which, you know, this is coming from somebody who's had very respectful, very professional male colleagues. The artists I've worked for have never ever overstepped boundaries. You know, they've always been, for the most part, you know. Yeah, I am respectful. still feel like I am sexualized. Oh every, so a lot of my clients I work with are in the dance industry, they're DJs. Being in clubs, being like doing Ibiza residencies, for me, I remember being so stressed of like, what am I gonna wear to this club appearance? And what am I gonna wear? Because mm. all my all these males who can rock some shorts and a shirt, in my eyes, I'm like, right, if my if my for st stupid shit, like a few weeks ago, I had like a Ministry of Sound gig, and I was like, I don't wanna come across too like, you know, I've gotta look cool because I, A, I want the artists the, who's in the booth with him to look cool because it looks good on social media that he's got like people that dress well and whatever. Yeah. But I remember looking at my boyfriend, I was like, I can't find my bra. And he's like, I oh, just don't wear a bra. I'm like, I can't just not wear a bra because then they'll know I have nipples. It's like, <laughs> why does it matter that I have it's nipples? Like, yes, thing. every, like, be real. Mm. Every male so has sucked it. Or as a baby as well. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, I have nipples, obviously I do. So for why do I have to cover them up? But it's because we're so sexualized as women in all aspects of society, mm -hmm. that if you show a nipple when you walk down the street- It's like the opposite it's like, of being sensitized. Like, why am I stressing over that? Sensitized. Also, I should be able to turn up, do, and I'm like, I'm not professional to the point where I can't like have a good, like, yeah, have fun, good but I turn up, I do my job well, I'm professional about it, I deliver results quickly, I'm not, I don't overstep any social boundaries. I should be able to turn up and not worry that you oh, can you see absolutely. what my nipple looks like. Separate see, issue. It's a shame. You know, sorry, just completely unrelated. You know, like, um, like tampon adverts or whatever, and they do oh. like that fake blue stuff. Can we, <laughs> sorry, can we just not do that anymore? Because that is just, just ridiculous. Am I the only one who doesn't know what we're on about right now? You know so when they do the pads and they drop the blue liquid, it's supposed to be like, yeah, you're it's meant to be blood, it is. it's, it's like, performed. We don't bleed blue. Yeah. 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 Stab yeah. it. Sorry, I didn't mean that, smart. but that just we're needs women. to stop. If anybody <laughs> in, it out, in the Tampax, yeah. you know, <laughs> marketing team <laughs> hears yes, this, please. yeah, please cut it out. If it's a as well, can you do better? <laughs> yeah. Not please. And they're always like, yeah, like, 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 and they're always <laughs> like, I'm playing tennis and it doesn't matter. I'm like, what <laughs> I girl. No, but on bringing it back to the like, I obviously work as an interviewer, a presenter, and because I work in the music industry, the music industry is very male dominated, especially when it comes to like rap and hip hop. Most of the people I interview, um, are men mm. and I've been in positions where like I've had the person who's booked me be like yeah can you wear this and I'm like you know who you've hired mm. have, you, have you seen me wear a dress and heels and mm. you think I'm gonna pull up to this just because you want me to get more interviews and they think that what 
that I'm going to get more interviews because I'm dressed like a hoe. And it's like, yeah, technically I would, but the interview is going to be them moving to me on camera. Yeah. It's not going to be an interview. Mm -hmm. And I've had that before. Like, I've, I've been... That. I've carried on the conversation and I've had like the person I'm interviewing like just put their arm around me and I'm thinking you wouldn't be doing this to yeah, a guy. Yeah, no. yeah, and then like yeah. ask me like oh, so where are you going after this? And I'm thinking I will drop this mic on your toe. Mm. For all you know, well, as I, soon like, as the camera's like, off. No, I'm on, on camera. camera. They right. don't even care. Like it will be on camera. There's so many and then I've got people who have like then clipped it up and made it like ha ha. Ha ha look like, how funny like they're funny. drunk. I'm not drunk. I'm doing yeah. my job. Mm. Put yeah. some respect on my name like. And then you I feel like also I don't, this is going to be like more of a personal one. I don't know if anyone else can relate, but I will have men who work in the same industry as me move to me in their own time, not on camera or anything like that. But I can't be a bitch. Yeah, I can't be rude. No, because because can't if I'm rude and now someone shouts me for a job you and you're working that same job, I know their but voice But it's not even being rude. Than but you can't be boundary. Yeah, yeah. No, you can't exactly. say that makes me uncomfortable. Please yeah, yeah. Don't it's not even rude. And I you did. It's like, oh, shit. I've just got to like, I, bro, do you know how much I'm playing dumb? I'm leading yeah. these men on being like, yeah, yeah, I'll link you in two weeks. Two weeks comes. Never happens, but. Because <laughs> you just got to string it along. And you know what? That yeah. happened to me recently. And I'm so glad I did it because two weeks later, I had a job on set yeah. with the guy that was moving yeah. to me. Mm. And the only reason I got that job is because he shouted me after. He was mm -hmm. like, yeah, they were doing the casting process. But like, I put in a good word See? for you. Yeah. It's, it's not spoken enough. It's honestly not spoken enough. But it's like, can enough. you not put in a good word because I'm really good at my job. I'm skilled. I'm there professional. You don't no, it's because you think don't I'm fit. Like, there you go. It's, yeah. that, it's that really, really thin line in between like, I need to make you think that something's going to happen and not ever let anyth anything yeah. happen. But I also think it's the consumers as well as like, it's not just no, the people 100%. you work with. Like for me, I remember distinctly, it was like the second or third show that I did with a previous DJ who I used to work with. And I was walking into the booth. Now, when I walk into the booth, I wear all black so that, you know, you can't be invisible. It's invisible <laughs> but like, I wear all black. I wasn't wearing anything revealing. I literally had a massive tripod in my hand. I had a huge landlord that said triple A. Yes, and then landlord. It had video landlord is the great it word. No, it's it's lanyard. Like, <laughs> landlord. I had a landlord. <laughs> I had a lanyard that said like triple a video and photo which means that you have like mm -hmm. pre, you know i was clearly working mm. i was clearly working set ends goes really well the whole time i'm obviously filming i'm obviously not like i'm not kissing up on him on the way out somebody who was in the it was like two girls who were in the vip area so they would like they're just for the for the vibes yeah, so, yeah, you yeah. know were like wow his girlfriend's young because this dj was like in his 30s oh and God. in my mind i'm like so because i am a female in the booth with him even mm. though i am so baitly at work mm. and I'm mildly attractive. It was like, <laughs> it must be his girlfriend. Yeah. There's no way. And they were like, wow, his girlfriend's young. And the other girl was like, yeah, she looks presume. bare young. And I was like, you can't presume. Maybe she's working. Mm. Maybe she's at work. Maybe she works in a job that's in the music industry. Maybe she's not that. He didn't, they didn't say like, oh, he happens to be gay about the tour manager who was a male. They're not presuming the tour manager is, isn't there for work. They're not presuming all the other people in the booth who were there partying yeah. weren't there for work. But. The one person who was there for work, they assume was his girlfriend just because I'm young and I'm a female. Yeah, yeah it's fine. Do you know what, no, that's happened to me.